bounty hunter. Acting under an 1873 Supreme Court decision, bounty hunters can arrest a bail jumper in any state and return him or her to court without need for extradition. They can enter a house without a warrant. It's dangerous work, but lucrative. The bounty hunter gets at least 20% of the bail. So if someone has jumped a $50,000 bail, the bounty hunter can make a cool $10,000 if he catches his man. He is called Dr. D, a name he used for 16 years as a professional wrestler. David Schultz ran into a few problems when he was doing his thing in the ring, like punching out a network correspondent on national television during an investigation of wrestling. What do you do after your wrestling career comes to an abrupt end? You become a bounty hunter. Schultz is six foot seven and 280 pounds. He spends his time nowadays going after wanted criminals who've jumped bail. Dr. D gets a cut, a reward for bringing them back alive. On this early morning, we go with Schultz and his backup after a man wanted for possession of a half kilo of cocaine with intent to sell. The alleged drug dealer is considered armed and dangerous. Schultz has gotten word from an informant that the suspect is holed up in his mother's apartment. All right, come on. Carl, mail enforcement agent. Somebody follow me. It's not easy going through this to come into somebody's home and, uh, and have people gun, you know? okay. crying and screaming. It's very guns. difficult to go through. Guns, yeah. There's no guns. doubt about that. Your son lied. He said he wasn't here. He's done. He's caught. He's busted. He's going to jail, okay? Almost 330,000 felons have skipped bail in the United States this year. According to the FBI, only 136,000 have been rearrested. In New York alone, of the more than 50,000 bail jumpers, the police have been able to find only 11,000. Not enough cops to recapture the same criminals they've already arrested at least once. You can always use more men. As long as there's uh, felons on the street, we need more police officers to do this type of work. Taking up some of the slack of an overburdened police department, the cowboys they call mercenaries, the bounty hunters, the guys who take the risk to get their man for the bucks. I have more power than the police. I don't need a search warrant. The law uh, says I have the right to break in a guy's apartment to arrest him. I have a right to chase him across the state lines, arrest him on the 7th. I have a right to arrest him anywhere, anytime, okay. and I have to give him uh, okay. no rights. I mean, I'm talking about Amanda rights and stuff. Of course, I can't mistreat the guy. Right. But I mean, do you, you think know. that's right that you have, in a way, more police? I think it's a yes power, but I also think the police ought to have the same power. There is no love lost between the NYPD and bounty hunters. The police department is openly critical of some of the methods used by the bounty hunters. In fact, tomorrow, the we'll again go after a bail-jumping drug dealer and hear criticism of the bounty hunter tactics, which some cops say jeopardize the lives of innocent people. Bill and Katie. John, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bill. Law enforcement is overwhelmed by the caseloads of criminals who jump bail. People arrested for crimes who never show up in court, about 300,000 every year. The bounty hunter helps bring some of these jail uh, jumpers back, bail jumpers that is. But these citizen mercenaries have been criticized for using questionable tactics in their arrest of criminals. Despite the severe criticism, bounty hunters are part of an American tradition that dates back 117 years to the Wild West. The origins of the bounty hunter date back to an America when desperados like Jesse James, Butch Cassidy, and Billy the Kid were making it tough on frontier law enforcement. The bad guys were raiding banks, trains, and stagecoaches, and hauling off thousands in cash and gold. It was an era that ushered in the bounty hunter. To help the overburdened sheriffs and marshals of the Old West, the 1873 Taylor versus Tainter Supreme Court decision gave bounty hunters sweeping authority to go after bail jumpers and bring them back for a cash reward. That same law, more than 100 years old, is still on the books today. A law that gives these modern day bounty hunters the authority to go after a suspected drug dealer who has jumped his $65,000 bail. If he comes out and he's got the gun, if you think your life's in danger, shoot him. David Schultz is a bounty hunter. 
a former professional wrestler whose full-time profession is now bringing in bail jumpers. He is one of an estimated 500 bounty hunters operating in the United States who unofficially take credit for bringing in more than 5,000 bail jumpers each year. Schultz's partners on this job are 340-pound Bob Schmeg, a full-time corrections officer, and Richard Stone, a retired New York City cop. They are in the business of bounty hunting for the money and what they call the excitement of the chase. No. No. Okay, back up. Whoop. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Shh. Don't move. Get your hands up one at a time. Get it up over your head one at a time. The other one, put it up. Put it up. The other one, put it up. Put it up. Drop it. If you got a gun, drop it. Get him up. Get him up. Get on the ground. Here on the ground. Right here. Down. Down. On the ground. Don't you move. I'll blow your brains out. You hear me? Shut up. You shut up or you're going to jail. For bringing in this suspect, Schultz and his bounty hunters will get at least 20% of the bail. In this case, $13,000. But bounty hunters don't like to say how much they make. Schultz would only tell us this was his 98th capture this year. Captures that not everyone applauds. The tactics used by Schultz and other bounty hunters have been severely criticized by the American Civil Liberties Union. Lawyers for the union call the law under which the bounty hunters operate antiquated and open to abuse by a band of untrained vigilantes. We at the Civil Liberties Union, in looking at the question of bounty hunters, are very troubled uh, by uh, the notion uh, that uh, private citizens, under the color of state law, uh, can uh, bring people into custody because it invites for all kinds of uh, scenarios uh, for unreasonable seizures, uh, for unreasonable abuse, uh, not only mental but potentially physical abuse. And there have been documented cases of bounty hunter criminal and physical abuse. Tomorrow, we'll tell you about one such case. But to become a bounty hunter is to be 21 years of age or older. A simple prerequisite for the dangerous and serious business of bringing in wanted criminals, bail jumpers. The police are carefully trained in arrest techniques in order to protect innocent lives. But bounty hunters don't have to be trained, and they don't have to play by the same rules. And there's a loaded shotgun in the trunk of his car, the car with the flamboyant license plate. A former Marine who spent much of his youth in orphanages, Rifkin is a wily bounty hunter who resorts to disguises and trickery to nab his bail jumpers. Rifkin works on more than 200 cases a year. Their hands are tied. They're bound by certain restrictions and regulations which are so stupid. Whereas I'm not a vigilante, I'm not a... a, 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 a uh, an FBI agent, I'm a citizen making a citizen's arrest. Not everyone agrees with Rifkin. Both the New York Police Department and some legal experts say the 500 or more bounty hunters operating in the United States are vigilantes who go beyond the bounds of the law to capture bail jumpers. We did not find any uh, statute or regulation or rule that provided for licensing of bounty hunters. Uh, therefore, we don't know whether these individuals are trained, whether they are uh, good at what they do, whether or not they are intimidating, manhandling. We in New York uh, should count our blessings that perhaps we haven't had uh, serious horror stories of what a bounty hunter has done. But there are bounty hunter horror stories, like bounty hunter Lance Wilkerson, who was arrested last year for beating up a bail jumper. We came here to Manchester, New Hampshire to interview a bounty hunter who is having his own troubles with the law. Bounty hunter Lance Wilkerson is facing a battery of charges, including kidnapping. Once here in Manchester, Wilkerson had a change of mind. He decided not to be interviewed. Stan Rifkin admits that there are some bounty hunters who give the profession a bad name, but he points to all the good work bounty hunters do like capturing more than 5,000 bail jumpers each year, or saving innocent people, like this woman, from losing everything. She put up her house and her life savings as bail to get a family member out of jail only to have her relatives skip town. You almost felt that you had the court of last resort for you was going to the bounty hunter. Yes, it was to save my life and, and my home. 
Despite bounty hunters helping people like this woman save a life's work, the bounty hunters and the law under which they operate, a century-old Supreme Court decision, is coming under increased and critical scrutiny. We should immediately look at this issue and perhaps in the legislative session in 1990, uh, perhaps think about uh, at a minimum uh, licensing provisions, setting minimum standards for uh, bounty hunters because uh, it seems to me that there is an open invitation for misuse of power. You shut up or you're going to jail! There have been recent attempts by some states to limit the power of bounty hunters in Arizona, but that legislation didn't pass. What still stands is that Supreme Court decision made 117 years ago. Interesting report. I think most people had no idea that bounty hunters still existed. It was an eye-opening look. You're it right. It was indeed. Yeah. When we continue with eyewitness news, what could be 